your own academic adventure. My name is Lizzie Zentner and I'm an admissions counselor at Colorado State University and I'll be moderating tonight's chat. So I'll be helping you kind of field questions, get everything answered. A couple reminders before we get started and introduce our panel for tonight. There are a couple different ways to ask questions for this event. So you can ask them through Twitter using hashtag RamChat. Just use the hashtag and ask us. You can also ask on our Facebook page. You can ask on the Google Plus account that we have. And you can also go to call, um, admissions.colostate.edu backslash RamChat and then go ahead and ask questions through there directly. So whatever makes you most comfortable, you're more than welcome to do whatever you want to do that's easiest. We have some ambassadors here taking down your questions as they come in, so feel free to ask away. Tonight's focus is mainly on arts, humanities, communications, and design, so we have a Your great panel academic here adventure. to help My us name is um, I'm in with everything. So go ahead and introduce yourselves, everybody. We're going to go ahead and start with Don and Sandra in the bottom left-hand corner, if you want to go ahead and start introducing yourself. Hi, I'm Dawn Millette. I'm an assistant professor in the School of Education. Within the School of Education, we house the School of Teacher Education and Principal Preparation. And I am responsible for an undergraduate program, which is Family and Consumer Sciences. Just to tell you just a, briefly a little bit about uh, either of those programs, the School of Teacher Education and Principal Preparation is one of the top three teacher licensing programs in the nation and we offer 16 endorsement areas and we license teachers for Colorado and so if a student is interested in getting a teaching license the STEP program is where they would land. The students will get their degree in a college, a different college, and then come to the School of Education for licensing and we will service uh, students from the eight different colleges and prepare them to get a teaching license. We, uh, I'll, I guess I'll share with you now a little bit about the Family and Consumer Sciences program. And in that program, I'm the, um, the director of that program. I advise the students and I teach classes within uh, that interdisciplinary program. The students in Family and Consumer Sciences are prepared as professionals with the knowledge and skills to assist individuals, families, and consumers uh, to make informed decisions with regard to their well-being, their relationships, and the utilization of their resources. So the students that we prepare have a broad degree. We're, we're an interdisciplinary degree within the College of Health and Human Sciences. And our students take classes in human development and family studies, food science and human nutrition, design merchandising, health and exercise science, social work, a broad range of the department with, departments within the college to prepare them for their, their teaching or other industry in which they may, they may choose to go into. So if you have any questions about either the School of Teacher Education and Principal Preparation or Teacher Licensing, or you have any questions about Family and Consumer Sciences, I'm here to answer those questions. Hi, my name is Sandra Chisholm. I'm an Academic Support Coordinator in the Department of Design and Merchandising. In the Department of Design and Merchandising, we offer two Bachelor of Science degrees. One is in Interior Design. And that's a Council of Interior Design accredited program, four-year Bachelor of Science degree. After um, students uh, pursue the four years, they are interior designers. And we do place over 90% of our uh, students uh, get a job as an interior designer after they earn their bachelor's degree. The other uh, degree that we offer is in apparel and merchandising. And within the apparel and merchandising degree, we offer two concentrations. Um, the first concentration is apparel design and production. And that's a very hands-on program in that our students are um, going through the process of design, starting from illustration, inspiration, um, they're drafting patterns, they are um, draping and producing garments. Um, most of our students in that program do have the goal to be a designer at the end of their four-year degree. Uh, the, other pro the other concentration is in merchandising. And the merchandising concentration is, uh, has more of a business base to it. 
our students are taking um, classes in consumer behavior, marketing, management, um, accounting, economics, um, as well as the, the classes that we offer within the department in merchandising um, and textiles and, and our apparel classes. Uh, our merchandising concentration works really well with a business minor. Uh, our students only have to take three additional courses and they end up with a business minor on top of their um, Bachelor of Science in Apparel and Merchandising. Um, the jobs that our students with the merchandising concentration um, typically find themselves um, as a buyer, a uh, visual merchandiser. We do have students that are pursuing um, being a stylist and oftentimes those students will combine that degree with um, a minor in communications. So we do really offer um, a pretty broad spectrum um, of opportunities for our students in both interior design and apparel and merchandising. So if you have any questions tonight um, on either the apparel and merchandising side or the interior design side, I'll be happy to answer those questions. All right, thank you so much. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Seth and Mandy now to introduce themselves. Seth and Mandy, do you want to introduce yourselves? Yes. Hi. Uh, my name is Mandy Billings, and I'm an academic support coordinator with the College of Liberal Arts. Um, and a little bit about me, I advise English students specifically for the College of Liberal Arts. Um, and before doing that, I was a faculty member here at CSU for two years in the English department, and I've also been a student here at CSU. So I've been a part of the CSU community for a long time. Um, the College of Liberal Arts has 13 different departments, and we offer 17 different majors. Uh, and we are the largest college for undergraduate students at CSU. Um, and I'd be happy to answer any questions about any of the different departments and majors. It's such a diverse range of fields that we have in the College of Liberal Arts. Students are interested in all sorts of topics. They end up going to all sorts of different career paths out of our college. Hi, I'm Seth. I'm a student in the College of Liberal Arts, specifically the Communication Studies major. Um, I'm interested in visual and media culture as well as political rhetoric and communication. Uh, I'm part of the Center for Public Deliberation, which is an organization that's part of uh, CSU's Comm Studies program. So if you have any questions about uh, liberal arts, communication studies, or what it's like to be a student here at CSU, I'm here to answer any questions you may have. Thank you both so much. Uh, do Tom and Emma want to introduce themselves now? We would love to introduce ourselves. I'm Tom Krebs. I'm the recruiting director for the Department of Music, Theater, and Dance. Uh, this is my colleague Emma Kimball, who's here speaking for Dance and Theater tonight. So we are one of the most exciting parts of the university, if we do say so ourselves, if not the most modest. Um, so within uh, the University Center for the Arts, we house music, theater, dance, and art in a brand new state-of-the-art facility. Uh, it's one of the top arts centers, uh, collegiate arts centers in the United States. It's a very exciting place where there's always something different happening all under one roof. Uh, there's a lot of good artistic juju in that building. Uh, so for music, we offer five different degrees. You can study performance, composition, uh, music therapy, music education, and then we offer a broad general Bachelor of Arts degree uh, in music. Uh, in addition to that, we have lots of different ensembles and activities that everyone from the whole university uh, and the Fort Collins community can participate in. Emma? As far as uh, theater and dance go, I guess my name is Emma Kimball and I'm a recent graduate of the dance department with a minor in technical theater and design. Um, the exciting thing for dance and theater right now is that we just became independent majors. So now you can get a major in dance or a major in theater. And within theater you can focus on directing or playwriting, design and technical theater or performance. Within dance, it's just a dance major, but we offer courses in choreography, pedagogy. Uh, there are hundreds, well not hundreds, but many, many performance opportunities, as well as your usual technique classes every day. So there's a lot, a lot that you can get from both those majors. We're shiny. We're special. Jazz hands. 
<laughs> thank you all so much for introducing yourselves. And I just want to take a second to thank all of our panelists that got to come and help tonight. It's a little snowy in Fort Collins today, so it means a lot to us that you came to help us with all of this. So thank you all. So we're going to go ahead and start with the questions. We have a bunch lined up right here to get started with. It'll be kind of popcorn, so it'll go back and forth to all of our panelists. So if you're not hearing questions that are specific to your major right away, just go ahead and stick around. We'll be here for a little while answering questions. So the first question I think would probably be best directed to Mandy. And it is a question about our political science program. Sean asks, what is unique about our political science program? Our political science program has a lot of excellent hands-on internship opportunities, um, especially for upperclassmen. We have an internship program where students are able to work directly with the state legislature. Um, and we also have students who will frequently do summer internship programs in Washington, D.C. or in other areas. Uh, we also have an excellent pre-law advisor, Dr. Courtney Dom, who is a professor in the political science department. Um, certainly not all students who are interested in going on to law school choose a political science undergraduate degree, but it is a popular choice for students who are interested in going on to law school. So it is nice that we do have our pre-law advisor housed in the political science department. Um, and she does an excellent job guiding students through that process um, and organizing our pre-law club. Um, so those are some of the highlights of the political science department. Uh, it's definitely a really strong program. Awesome. Thanks, Mandy. This next question is about interior design. So Sandra, I bet this will probably go towards you. Um, there's, it's kind of a two-part question. It asks, how competitive is the interior design program? And Emily wants to know how many internship opportunities are available to interior design majors. OK, to answer the first part of your question, Emily, um, how competitive is the program? It is a competitive competitive program, and students who apply for interior design come in for the, the first year as pre-interior design majors. Um, after the first semester, or during the first semester, they take two courses, an intro to interior design and a visual communications and sketching course. Um, these two courses become foundation for um, our design scenario, which happens the second semester in April. And um, that's where we have um, our first year interior design students come in for a half day long assessment uh, where they're evaluated on the concepts and skills that they learn in the first two interior design courses they take their first semester. Typically, to answer exactly how competitive it is, in recent years we've had um, between 50 and 70 pre-interior design students sit for our design scenario and we will allow um, a maximum of 44 uh, and that's, that number is, is specific to our um, CEDA accreditation. So um, typically 35 to 44 students will be accepted each year out of 50 to 70 students that sit for design scenario and it all depends on the quality of the candidates. So that I think answers the first part of the question. The second part of the question, we do require that all of our students um, take an internship during their senior year. Um, it's, a, it's a three credit internship and um, some students have taken um, internship for a little more credit. Um, we do have an internship coordinator who helps our students get connected with internships um, here in Fort Collins in Denver. We've also had students um, take their internships overseas. So as part of a study abroad um, program, they can do a study abroad semester and then in the summer following their spring semester they can stay on and um, we've had students in Dublin, Ireland um, do their internship and we've had students in New Zealand um, amongst other places do their internships. So internship opportunities I think um, we can thank our fantastic internship coordinator for really hooking our students up with with good experiences. I think we have um, we have great experiences. Also our faculty um, have just a great network of professionals in the field and um, we're able to um, place those students with good internships. Great, thank you. This next question I guess could be directed to either Tom or Emma. You could decide who wants to answer this. Uh, Haley would like to know how big is your music therapy program? Okay. That's a good that's a good question. Um it's about 60 60 undergraduates I would say. Um give or take a little it changes each year. Um our music therapy program is one of the best in the country. One of the top 3 programs in the country um depending on what year it is and who you ask. 
but I'm telling you that the people that write the music therapy textbooks work here. Uh, so it's a real, it's a really great part of our of our department. Um, we do a lot of work with cognitive music therapy uh, and neurologic music therapy, which means that they basically retrain the brain using music. Um, someone who's had a stroke and can't speak uh, might still be able to sing uh, because it uses a different part of the brain and and our program focuses on not only musical skills uh, but also medical terminology, neuropsychology, all of the science to do that as well. Um, so it's, like I said, about 60 students and uh, a real point of pride for us. Thank you, Tom. This next question is going to go to, to Dawn and someone would like to know if we license elementary school teachers and do we get our degree in education? Okay. So we offer an early childhood education degree preparing mm -hmm. teacher candidates to teach uh, preschool through third grade, but not an elementary ed program at this time. We do have a, um, an excellent ECE program, and it does get you up to the third grade, but currently we don't have the elementary ed. The other part of the question was, you do not get your degree in the education in, I guess, STEP or the, the School of Teacher Education and Principal Preparation, you would get your degree in Human Development and Family Studies and then have the licensure classes within the STEP program, which would prepare you for the licensing in, in early childhood education. Great, thank you. Uh, we're going to go right back to your frame here because I've got a question for Sandra. Diego wants to know, he says, I want to be a fashion designer and a graphic designer. What are your fashion design and graphic design classes like? Well, I can speak to the fashion design classes. And as I said, we do have um, our Bachelor of Science in Apparel uh, and Merchandising. We have our Apparel Design and Production concentration. Um, and that's where we start students from the very foundations of apparel design and they work through to their final capstone project where they are designing a line. They have to research um, a target market and design a line of clothing. So I would say to answer what are our um, apparel design classes like, they're very hands-on. Um, it's, it's a very hands-on um, program where we are um, doing um, design, illustration, pattern making, draping, uh, construction, um, garment construction, and um, finally presenting a final line. We do ask industry um, in Colorado to come and um, be an audience for our students as they present their final line, and then they present again at our fashion show, which happens on March 7th um, this year. So um, that, that I can speak for the apparel design. I do know that we have a really strong graphic design program here in our art department. Um, however, that's in another college in another, and I'm not sure if any of our other um, participants here might be able to answer that part of the question. But I do know that we have a great um, graphic design program too. And I do know that we have had some students double major in both art and um, apparel design and production. So that could also be an, um, um, a possibility for a student that wants to work really hard. So, mm -hmm. um, but both are great programs. Great. Thank you so much, Sandra. This next question is going to be a great one for Tom. Um, a student asks, I haven't been admitted to CSU yet. Should I still audition for music, theater, or dance? Yes. Absolutely yes. Don't wait until you get your admissions decision. Um, go ahead and sign up for an audition now. Uh, we have all of our auditions for music around the end of February, uh, this year also on March 1st. Um, so you want to apply to the university uh, and to the uh, Department of Music, Theater, and Dance simultaneously. Um, don't wait for one or the other. And uh, that is my final word on that. Don't wait. Apply now. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Mandy, this next question is for you. A student asks, what type of career could I expect after graduating with a journalism and technical communications degree? There are a ton of different career opportunities out of our journalism and technical communications program. Um, one of the strongest parts of that program is the amount of hands-on opportunities that our students get. If you're interested in news writing, if you're interested in video editing, if you're interested in behind the scenes of uh, TV broadcasting, there are opportunities for you. 
Um, our faculty is excellent. They've all worked in industry. They all have industry connections. We have fantastic internship opportunities. There's also on-campus opportunities for learning experience through our daily newspaper, The Collegian, through our television program, CTV, um, all sorts of different ways that students can build those skills and have networking opportunities so they're already ahead of the game when they're exiting the program. Um, students coming out of the Journalism Technical Communication program will have a portfolio of work that they've done in whatever area it is they're interested in. So if you want to be able to go into the working world with clippings, with bylines, um, with video that you've edited, you will have the opportunity to do that and have those things to present to future employers. Um, so it's really wide open. We have students who go into reporting. We have students who go into social media. We have students who go into um, public relations, things like that. And then students who, who find their passion in another area. Um, and go in a different direction that might be a little more unexpected. Uh, but we really do have great hands-on opportunities in our journalism and technical communications program. Excellent. Uh, this next question is directed towards Sandra. You might not know the answer to all of this, but I think you'll be able to answer some of it. Um, Yoslin asks, I'm active duty military and would like to find out more about your online programs. I'm interested in psych and interior design. I know that you're not psych, but I figured you might be able to speak a little bit to interior design. For online education? We do offer some classes that are online, but the, um, the Bachelor of Science in Interior Design is essentially a traditionally offered um, degree. And the reason being that um, a lot of our classes are studio classes that um, require the student to be present um, in a studio situation. Um, so we do, to supplement that traditionally offered program, we do have some online classes that students can take um, over the summertime. Um, one of our introduction classes, our Interior Design 129 class, is offered um, online also. But to be honest, the majority of our classes um, are traditionally offered classes. Great. That's perfect. Um, Tom, another question for you. Is theater or dance available as a minor at CSU? I'm going to throw it to Emma. <laughs> She's got all the facts. He's letting me talk now. Um, neither theater nor dance have minors anymore. We used to have them, um, but they were eliminated in restructuring things. But there are opportunities to participate in theater and dance, even if you're not a major. Um, for instance, in the dance program, uh, student works that appear in the spring or fall concerts, our auditions are open to anyone in the university, so you can come to that and see what you get into and probably get to perform. Likewise, in theater, almost all but maybe one of the shows, um, auditions are open to mm -hmm. anyone who's welcome. And even when there's small projects in classes, um, they ask for anyone to audition because we like to see new faces and we like to allow people who might not be able to major in it still be involved. So there's definitely opportunities, even without a minor. Awesome. Thanks, Emma. Another question for Sandra. Uh, what computer programs do you use for apparel and merchandising? Do I have to be proficient in them before I come to campus? OK, to, to answer the first, or I guess to answer the second part of the question, um, no, you do not need to be um, proficient in these programs before you come to campus. We have um, we start from the 100 level in apparel and merchandising with um, offering students um, the necessary computer programs, and then we build on that throughout the program. Um, to answer your question uh, on what they actually are, we use Adobe Illustrator, Photoshop, InDesign, Lectra Modaris, and Caladu. Um, mock shop and WGSN. So uh, we feel that we're very competitive with our computer technology and computer software that we teach. Um, we teach students, and uh, we have several courses that you're going to find um, that that software um, being taught. Excellent. Um, another question for our folks over at the University Center for the Arts: Do I have to audition to be a music, theater, or dance major? Yes and no. Uh, you have to audition to be a music major uh, or minor. Uh, you have to audition to be a dance major. Uh, theater right now is an open major, um, so everybody can participate. 
Um, but they still have auditions uh, for scholarships, for placement, and just kind of to get a sense of you uh, and what your skill level is. Anything you'd like to add, Emma? Um, we, if for some reason you happen to miss an audition date for dance, um, our faculty are very good about meeting with people who are just dying to get into a class and usually they'll work something out, but it's still basically an audition. You have to take class and they watch you and scrutinize you and all that stuff. But, yeah. Thanks, you both. Uh, for Sandra, do you have a hairstylist program Madison would like to know? We do not have a hairstylist program, unfortunately. Um, but we do work with hairstylists around town, especially during um, our fashion show season. But, um, but currently, we're not offering um, anything in, in hairstyling. OK, great. Uh, good to get that question answered. <laughs> yeah. So Marcos wants I love this. I was a history major while I was at CSU. Marcos wants to know, I love history. What kind of degree? And afterwards, what kind of jobs would you be able to get? So I think he's asking, what kind of degrees do you offer? And what kind of jobs would you be able to get after with a degree in history? Well, uh, our history department has a number of different concentrations. Um, most students are going to choose either you know, the general history program or our social studies teaching track. Um, the social studies teaching track does partner with classes um, offered through the STEP program. Um, so you would be taking classes in history in the department, and then you'd also be taking those education classes to work toward licensure. Um, and then if you're not interested in teaching at the secondary level, at, at middle school or high school level, um, we do have classes that cover you know, the whole gamut of world history, different areas, different regions. Um, into you know more contemporary history, looking at things through different comparative lenses. Um, our undergraduate students go on to law school, they go on to graduate school, uh, they go on to work in museum studies. Um, there's really all sorts of different directions you can go in with a history degree. Um, you know, and once we meet you and can talk to you a little bit more about the path that you're interested in, we can partner you up with faculty who work in that area, who do research in that area, and they can help get you on the right pathway maybe toward internship opportunities, maybe toward understanding a little bit more how that specific area of history works. Um, I don't advise for history in particular, um, but I do know that history is a popular major for our students, and we have a lot of students who really enjoy it and really enjoy working with our faculty there. I'm a total history nerd. I loved the history program while I was at Colorado State. And hey, you could go be an admissions counselor with us. <laughs> so you never know. All right, the next question is for Dawn. Uh, we're throwing it back to you. What are some common jobs family and consumer science graduates apply for when they graduate? Family and consumer sciences graduates have an interdisciplinary look at all those issues. So the job options are pretty broad. Um, we have students who will go into cooperative extension or be a, a cooperative extension agent, consumer program development. We have um, entrepreneurs, those that will work for government, community, or nonprofit. We have those who will go to the Peace Corps or do missionary work. Uh, we have family life educators. A broad range of things that students can do with that particular degree. Also, when they take coursework, the Family and Consumer Sciences track will allow them a lot of electives. So they can take those electives and focus those courses on their main interests so that it can boost their uh, marketability when they go to apply for a position. So they may find that they are more interested in the food science and human nutrition aspect related to individuals, families, and consumers, and so they might enhance their coursework through taking more classes in that particular area or in any of the other areas that they um, that we take courses in as family consumer sciences. And one of the main um, careers that we prepare students for is the family consumer sciences education. So they will teach at the secondary level uh, and they'll teach family consumer sciences content such as life management skills, relationship skills, child and adolescent dis um, development, uh, they'll teach fashion merchandising, interior design, they'll teach financial wellness, uh, nutritional wellness, catering, all those types of things. So again, you can see the broad base that 
either the, um, the students who do the family and consumer sciences education track can do, or those who choose the family and consumer sciences track, um, which we commonly consider the general track, uh, because of their interdisciplinary, interdepartmental coursework that they take. Great. Thank you so much, Dawn. This is a question for Sandra. A student would like to know, if I'm interested in coming in as an apparel and merchandising major, do I need to know how to sew? <laughs> no. Uh, you do not need to know how to sew. And um, the amount of sewing that you actually will do will depend on what concentration um, you decide to pursue. So if you're going to be an apparel and merchandising major with a, a concentration in apparel design and production, then you will learn sewing um, for, from a production perspective and also um, for your own designs. So you will learn how to sew uh, as you go. There will be um, industrial sewing classes um, and but you do not need to know how to sew. If you're a merchandising student, you will not be doing really any sewing. You will be more focused on the business side of it um, and learning um, the industry from a more business perspective. So, um, but uh, but for either side, you don't need to know how to sew. Um, well, a lot of our design students do come in with some sewing background just because they have a bit of a background. They they've enjoyed. Um, designing and making their own garments, typically, and um, have, have picked up some of those skills along the way that is not necessary. I will interject at this point and just make sure that all of our viewers who are joining us know that we have been chatting for about 30 minutes now, so we may have answered some of your questions a little earlier in the session. So if we're not addressing something or anything along those lines, it might be because we talked about it earlier, we want to ask some other questions, things along those lines. Just make sure that you're checking out the rest of the feed later. Our communications team actually bullets all the questions individually on the admissions website at the end of all of these chats. So if you do have any specific questions that you think may not have been answered, make sure that you check that out at the end of tonight's broadcast. So the next question is going to be for Dawn. And what are requirements to be accepted into the teacher licensing, licensing program? Well, like I indicated before, in order to be a licensure student, you will major in a department and then you will come generally about in your junior year to the school of education, let's see, the <laughs> School of Teacher Education and Principal Preparation uh, for that coursework. And in order to get accepted into the teacher education program, you have to have, for all the content areas, it's a 275 GPA overall, cumulative. And then for social studies, it is a 3.0 because there are a lot of social studies candidates, so we are. Um, we had to raise the GPA to a 3.0. They all. You also have to show documented work experience, or not work experience necessarily, but work with school-age children. 20 hours of work of working with school-age children. You have to have you a C or above in all of your content classes. You have to have a C or above in all of the education classes. And then also, obviously, you will go through a background check uh, to make sure that you are fit to work with children. So generally, those are the requirements to get into the second semester of the licensure program. Our licensure program is in four phases. The first uh, phase, you are able to, anyone on campus can take those classes if they are considering going into education. Once you've committed to going into education, you apply, meet those criteria I just suggested, and then you are accepted to move through the next three phases, which include uh, a student teaching semester. And one thing that I will share at this time, too, is that the students who do, we have a really nice program in licensure because the students get a lot of hours in the actual classroom with actual teachers and actual students. So by the completion of the program, students will spend 800 hours of experience in classrooms with teachers and students. So that's um, exciting parts of our program, but I know that's a long, long answer to what are the requirements, but yes, we do have requirements because we want to put the best and brightest in front of the students. So. Well, you answered it very thoroughly, so that's good. Getting a lot of information. This next question is 
very broad and it kind of applies to everybody that's here. So the question is, will I have help finding internships and are they required? I know that a couple of you touched on this already. So maybe we go through individually and just say what kind of resources are available with students to help them find internships in the fields that you specialize in and uh, maybe if they're required or not for specific majors, if that's okay with all of you. Let's start over with Don and Sandra. Well, so we highly suggest that our family and consumer sciences general students do an internship because that makes them more marketable and helps them focus on their career plans. So we, the faculty in family and consumer sciences help locate internships and possible internships, the career center as well, in, um, in helping students identify what their uh, interests are and what might fit. So it's a combination of the student doing some exploration as well as with the assistance of faculty members for internships. In Family and Consumer Sciences Education and then in STEP, of course, student teaching for the semester is their internship. So they are in the classrooms uh, a lot. So that takes care of the internship for those. For um, apparel and merchandising, we do require that our students take a 12 credit internship and that typically happens in their final year. So we, ha we um, have an internship coordinator and students in the third year of the program will take a pre-internship seminar and that's where they're going to be really refining the resumes, working on the resumes, cover letters, um, getting some good skills um, that they will use to both get an internship and during their internship there's some professionalism in there too. Um, and so we do help our students, however the, the responsibility is ultimately on the student to apply and find the internship. What we find is that our alumni around the country um, are just great resources for us. We have a lot of, a lot of um, previous CSU students, uh, CSU graduates um, in some really great companies and that connection really, really helps us. So right now um, spring semester is really popular for our seniors to go on internship. Um, and we have um, many students in New York City um, and Los Angeles. We have um, two students at Disney um, doing merchandising for, for Disney. So we do find um, that we are able to place our students really well. Our internship coordinator really helps with that. On the interior design side, um, again, same thing. We have a coordinator for them. And they, um, as I said previously, they are um, doing their internship typically in their senior year. Um, it's a three credit internship for them and, uh, and we've also had students go overseas for that internship as well. So, and again, the connections and, the, and really our faculty connections as well are really helpful in um, allowing students to network and find that internship. All right, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Seth and Mandy now. Seth and Mandy, do you want to chat a little bit about internships? Sorry, we're having a problem with our emails. Um, so in the College of Liberal Arts, um, there are all sorts of different requirements across departments. So it really varies quite widely because we have so many different departments, so many different degree plans. Um, but there are opportunities to do internships or practicums with every single degree that we have in the College of Liberal Arts. Some do require that you do an internship or practicum, but for most it's an optional component that you can add in either for credit or not for credit. Um, departments, most departments have an internship coordinator who is dedicated to that position. Um, and then we also have the College of Liberal Arts um, Career Center liaison who also works with different local opportunities for internships for students. Um, and the kinds of internships our students do are really varied. We have students who do nonprofit work. We have students, um, for instance, in the English department who do literacy work at the Larimer County Detention Center. We have students in the English department who do publishing work um, with our undergraduate literary journal and also with publications in the community. Um, and we have in the English department specifically uh, a dedicated internship coordinator. Um, and there's similar types of specified internship and practicum opportunities in different departments where either faculty or internship coordinators, um, your advisor, or our career center liaison, we can all work together to help place you in an opportunity that's going to match up with what you want to explore. 
And just to echo what Mandy said, the CSU Liberal Arts Support Coordination Office is really great when coming to uh, coordinating uh, practicum hours or for uh, internship opportunities with the College of Liberal Arts, specifically uh, for communication studies. Uh, you take one credit. You can take up to three credits of um, internship hours uh, during your junior or senior year. Um, I, I did my internship at a high school where I was a speech coach, and it was really awesome. Um, so I highly, highly recommend that if you're in the College of Liberal Arts to take the optional internship opportunities. Thanks so much, Seth. Uh, Tom and Emma, do you want to touch on internship opportunities in music, theater, and dance? Sure. So internships um, are, I suppose, less important in our fields, but uh, things like summer programs and working at um, seasonal organizations or, if nothing else, making great contacts with people, we definitely have wonderful faculty can, who can help you do that. Uh, specifically in dance and theater, I think that now is a great time to um, get into this department because we have some really wonderful faculty members, but the divisions are still small enough that you get to know them personally. So some of my dance teachers and some of my theater professors are, you know, direct recommendations for me on my resume. Um, they've connected me to professionals in the world to get jobs. I worked at a performing arts summer camp last summer because of one of my dance teachers and um, a, a contact that she had. So in dance and theater, your best advantage um, is just getting to know your faculty and telling them what you're interested in and showing them that you can, you can work hard and they'll help you find what you're looking for. I would just echo on the music side of things. Um, of course, our music education majors do student teaching, not exactly an internship, but, but we do get our student, uh, our music education majors placed at schools all over Colorado. Uh, and secondly, our music therapists, uh, they do a four-year program, and then they do an additional one semester, uh, which is an internship um, in various hospitals and medical facilities around the country. Um, so it extends the program, but the upside of that is then you then graduate as a board-certified music therapist. Uh, and because of that internship, you don't have to sit for your boards. Uh, so that's a great advantage that we have, and we also facilitate um, our therapists getting connected with those internships. Great. Thank you all so much for answering that one. I know it was a little bit of a long question for everybody to answer. But can I – oh, we got some lights out. We're back. We're back. Okay. Uh, so for some question stuff, I think we were sitting still for too long in here. That's kind of funny. Okay. Uh, so back to Sandra. We're going to talk about study abroad in the merchandising program. And a student would like to know, can I even study abroad while in the merchandising program at CSU? Yes. We, many of our students, and it seems like a growing number of our students from semester to semester are studying abroad. Um, the common places for um, our merchandising students to study abroad, I would say the most popular are London, Paris, and Florence, um, for obvious reasons, I think, probably. Um, and what we do is, when a student wants to study abroad, it's always good to talk to your advisor early on in the process for a couple of reasons. Um, one reason is we want to uh, make sure you have all your required courses and we can find a good semester for you to study abroad where it's not going to hold you back, you're not going to miss a really important class. Um, we also want to save some of those upper division electives because um, oftentimes um, that way you can choose, you have, can have a real good um, scope on what you can study and we have a space, we have two spots and six credits in our program where you can choose your, your elect electives. One, three of them are upper division electives and the other three are, can be either. So you want to talk to your advisor early on in the process so we can map it out and help you find the perfect semester. Um, some students choose to study abroad over the summertime and that way they can um, be sure that they're going to graduate within that four years and um, they just take um, less credits over the summertime as well. But it's very, very popular um, for um, our merchandising students to, to study abroad and they really get a fantastic experience by doing that, and it, I do think it helps them um, when they're looking for jobs at the end. 
Oh my gosh, all those places sound amazing. I would love yeah. to go to Florence. <laughs> That'd be so nice. Uh, so another question for your panel over there. I'm going to go to Don now. Why should I choose CSU's Family and Consumer Sciences program? Well, for one thing, we are the only Family and Consumer Sciences program in Colorado. So that's one reason to choose it, uh, because it's unique in that aspect. We're the only school in of higher education in Colorado that prepares Family and Consumer Sciences education majors. There are also the fact that uh, that our we have a very high placement of our graduates especially the ones in the education track, there is a need for family and consumer sciences education majors all over the country. Uh, and we're seeing, I guess, we get calls from different states saying, do you have any candidates that would like to, uh, to leave the state of Colorado because we're looking for some positions. A lot of our student teachers will get hired out of student teaching for their first teaching positions. So those are a couple of reasons why you should come to CSU for Family and Consumer Sciences. One of the most common things that people say is they choose Family and Consumer Sciences because their interests are broad and they don't want to just zero in on one thing. And thus the uh, interdisciplinary nature of our major and how that can really allow a student to, uh, to I guess, develop skills and knowledge in a broad range of content related to them as individuals, their work with families or consumers. Great. We're going to keep staying in your frame here because we've got a question for Sandra. Uh, a student is wondering, they, I am thinking about going to Front Range Community College to get my general education courses out of the way and then transferring into CSU's merchandising program. Do you think this is a good idea? Well, it's a good idea to take some of the core credits. Um, however, I will say that um, our program, the, during the first year of our apparel and merchandising program, um, we have students take five courses at the 100 level. Um, and those courses become prerequisites for courses in, this, in, the, in the 200 level um, of our uh, program. So what happens is students who come in with perhaps two years of core um, from Front Range or another community college oftentimes think that they can do two years at the community college and then just finish the, second, the last two years at CSU with um, a degree in, in apparel and merchandising. And um, that's not always the case just because of the sequencing of courses. Um, so I think if you're a student who's, who's considering going to Front Range or another, another community college is, and you know that you want to study in the Department of Design and Merchandising, touch base with, with um, an advisor, touch base with me so that we can take a look at what a plan would look like for you because it's not as straightforward as it is for some other majors just because we're really specialized and there's not really any of those courses offered at, at um, community college. So um, I would say it's a bit more difficult than, for instance, if you were going to do a science program and, and you can do that two years at community college and two years um, at a four-year institution. Um, on the interior design side of things, it's perhaps even more difficult. While you can find um, some uh, intro, an intro to interior design at Front Range here in Fort Collins, um, that, that can give you a start on the first semester, but that is such a structured um, um, program because it is an accredited program, so it is difficult to gain any more than really one semester. Um, from by going to community college um, beforehand. So again, I would say if you're interested in doing that um, and you think you for sure want to be part of the, the design and mer merchandising department, please um, touch base with us um, so that we can help advise you before you actually come to us. Great. Thank you so much. We're going to go back to music, theater, and dance. This probably would be a good question for Tom to answer. When will I find out about audition results or scholarship offerings for dance and music? Okay, um, that is a good question. So we have our auditions, as I said, during the month of February, and um, at least on the music side of things, and I think for dance also, uh, generally by around March 10th, we've made all of our decisions, uh, and we start sending out uh, acceptance letters. Now what's confusing is you will also be in communication with the Office of Admissions uh, that's going to be sending out information, so you just have to make sure that you're getting a yes uh, from both places. 
Um, when you audition for music uh, for a spot in the program, you're also auditioning for a scholarship at the same time. Um, so right around you know March 10th, we're going to let people know uh, whether they're in the program or not. We're going to follow that up about a week later uh, with some kind of scholarship offer, or we're going to let you know that you're on a waiting list or whatever your status is. Uh, and then you have until May 1st, uh, which is a national deadline, to decide where you want to go to school and what you want to do. Um, so we will hold your spot and your scholarship uh, until May 1st. As far as dance goes, um, getting into the college is pretty much the same dates as Tom said, where we have our audition at the high school visit day in February, and then you'll know within a month or so um, whether you've gotten into the program or not. However, with scholarships, um, we tend to give scholarships to students who have already come to the university. So we have auditions um, like the semester that you come here. So you won't start out with a scholarship in dance, but once you take your first semester, you can audition and hopefully get some help from there. And we're pretty excited because we think that we've got some new um, new scholarships that are being formed for dance majors this year. So, yeah. I will throw out, since we're on the subject, that this year's uh, theater and dance visit day are on Valentine's Day. Um, so forget your girlfriends and boyfriends. <laughs> Come and visit the Department of Music, Theater, and Dance, and we'll show you a good time. <laughs> so much love. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that. I'm glad that you told the dates for that. Otherwise, we wouldn't know that. That's good. Uh, Don, question for you. Will it take extra time to meet the teacher licensing coursework while I still graduate in four years? In fact, you will still graduate in four years. Uh, the programs are 120, a couple of the programs are a little, just a little over 120 credits, which, allow, which includes both your licensure sequence and your content and your core here at CSU. So within the four years, if you take 15 credits a semester, you sure can get done in the, um, four years. Occasionally, if a student transfers into and chooses late in their program to become a teacher, then of course it will take them longer than the four years. But if they start in and move through just as uh, would be planned, then yes, it is a four-year program. Excellent. Uh, we've got about eight minutes left, so we have a couple. We have time for a couple more questions here. So I'm going to shoot one over to music, theater, and dance. Do I have to be a major or minor to participate in the department? No, no. It's open. It's open to everyone at the whole university. Um, there's opportunities in all three areas. Uh, I certainly know that as far as music is concerned, uh, if you are a top performer, even if you're not a major, um, you can perform in our best ensembles. Uh, in fact, we actually have blind auditions uh, each semester, so even the professors don't know who it is that they're hearing. Um, so you absolutely can be first chair in the orchestra or the wind ensemble. Uh, I know that the theater program accepts students from all over campus in their productions, both our uh, main stage productions and our student productions. Uh, and there's opportunities for folks to dance in our beginning. Is it the techniques courses or the pedagogy ones? Yes. We have, as of this semester, we have three classes that you can take as a non-major. One is called Understanding Dance, and it's kind of a broad um, mix of history and some actual movement. So you get to just learn about different kinds of dance all over the world and through history. Uh, and then we have our very beginning modern class and our very beginning ballet technique classes, which are actually taught by dance students as part of their um, kind of student teaching in dance pedagogy. So they're really actually quite fun classes to take because you're taking from people who are actually your age. <laughs> so we have folks from all over campus and you should come join us. Great. Uh, we're going to turn it back over to Sandra. A student wants to know what scholarships are available for design and merchandising majors. Well, we, um, within the College of Health and Human Sciences, um, we do have um, a significant amount of uh, scholarship funds um, and there's a general application process um, that students can access through that website. Um, and that um, will channel them depending on what their experiences are and what they qualify for. And so students can answer a series of questions and then find out what scholarships are actually available to them. 
So um, I would um, advise um, a student who's looking for um, a college, a college of Health and Human Sciences uh, scholarship to go onto that website and follow the links and um, the application deadline is actually March 1st for those scholarships so um, I um, would advise them to go through and that's where most of our scholarship um, funds are. Once you're in the department um, through some, some of the org organizations um, and student networks, um, different scholarships um, come up um, from year to year, from semester to semester. But the big um, amount of funds is really avail available through the college. So I'd advise um, students to do that um, and do it quickly before March 1st. Can I add to that? So uh, like Sandra said, the College of Applied Human Sciences has a lot of scholarships that are available. They have scholarships that are college scholarships. Uh, scholarships that are interdepartmental scholarships as well as then scholarships that are offered through each of the different content areas or the different departments within the programs and um, there are a good number of them and I've been on the scholarship committee for a good number of years and sometimes we uh, we have scholarships that only have a few people apply, um, whereas we know that there are many more people out there who are qualified. So I would definitely look, we do have some uh, scholarships that are for incoming freshmen. So incoming freshmen should be looking at that, uh, that particular website. If you go on to the College of Health and Human Sciences uh, main website and under students, there's a scholarship link. And that leads you through the process of applying uh, by March 1. So really encourage you to do so. Awesome. Thank you both for adding to that. Uh, the last thing I think we have enough time to touch on with, I would, and I would love for everybody to answer this. A student asks, what student organizations are associated with your different departments? So I would love if we went screen to screen again and just talked a little bit about what student organizations are available through your different departments and then we'll go ahead and wrap it up for the evening. So if Don and Sandra, do you want to take it away for us again? Okay, yes, we have several student organizations. Um, let me start with um, the interior design um, side of things. Um, there's perhaps two main um, student organizations. Well, first, let me start with one. We do have a student mentoring group, which I think is really unique within this department. Um, and partly because it is a competitive entry major. Um, during the first year, we have our upperclassmen um, mentor um, our, our freshmen, our incoming freshmen, and it's a group that meets uh, once a week, and they do different sketching activities, and they'll, they'll do different activities. And it's really, really helpful for our freshmen to get um, chatting with some of those students that have been in the program for a couple of years. So the student mentoring group is one of them. Another one is AS. ID and that's the American Society of Interior Design um, is one option. Another one is um, the International Interior Design Association, IIDA. I always have to try <laughs> mentally uh, try to remember those. Um, so those organizations um, are going to look at different aspects of the interior design process. Um, on the apparel and merchandising side, we have Fashion Group International. Um, and our chapter of Fashion Group International, um, they put on a fashion show every year. Um, and again, a great opportunity for our freshman students um, coming in because we kind of we connect with um, our 100 level design class on that and have the students um, present their design um, projects at a fashion show in the Laurie Student Center every year. So that's a great opportunity for them. And then they do different fundraising, some different volunteer um, uh, opportunities there too. Another one that we have in our department is the Design and Merchandising Leadership Team and that's um, a group of students that's competitive. The students have to um, apply for this for this position um, and they um, become ambassadors within our department and they also volunteer um, outside of the department to they get involved um, in different activities throughout the year around welcome. Um, they help us uh, run our um, high school visit day which is March 7th to plug that. Uh, March 7th we have our high schoolers come in, we do different activities with the high schoolers and then we have our fashion show in the evening which is really um, a, a fantastic time. The fashion show is just it's great, gets better every year. So we have our design and merchandising leadership team help us with those high school students 
um, in the afternoon too. So I think that's kind of an overview of our student organizations. There's certainly plenty of opportunities for incoming freshmen um, in our department. I would say that the organizations that our students are a part of uh, generally would be the American Association of Family and Consumer Sciences, which has a Colorado division, and then also the um, the Colorado Association of Teachers of Family and Consumer Sciences. And so they'll be able to attend conferences and participate in events that those particular associations um, hold. As for a student organization here, we're um, a fairly small program, so specifically not any individual pro um, any individual organization to those students, but we, our students, because they are interdisciplinary, will participate in the ones that interest them out in the outside departments. And also, we have a number of students who will participate on the College of Health and Human Sciences Dean's Leadership Council, in which they do service activities, they help the Dean's Office with many activities all throughout the year, uh, and they're provided leadership training for that. So um, that's a great opportunity as well. Awesome. Seth and Mandy, do you want to touch a little bit on different types of clubs and orgs through College of Liberal Arts briefly? Sure. Uh, we have, you know, again, there's just such a huge range and variety. Um, every single department has some kind of organization that students can get involved with, some kind of club or activity. Um, some of them are more interdisciplinary. Uh, the pre-law club was one that I mentioned before, um, where students from all sorts of different majors can come together with that one, but it is housed in the political science department. Um, if you're interested in criminal justice, we have a criminal justice club. We have a club for um, an organization for uh, English student teachers. We have just all across the board. Um, specifically in the English department, we also have the Community Literacy Center housed in our department where undergraduate students can work with graduate students and faculty to do different community literacy projects. Um, I mentioned the opportunity to teach at the local detention center. Uh, we also have students who partner up with uh, English second language learners in the community and do reading. Um, there's so many, I'm thinking of, we have different service opportunities in different departments. Um, there's just so many across the board. It's, it's an overwhelming number. And if you don't see the club that you're interested in, you can always start one up yourself, uh, which is another great thing that we love to have students um, create their own opportunities, uh, see a need uh, around campus or in the broader Fort Collins community, and start an organization. And just to add to that, um, there are so many organizations in the College of Liberal Arts, and you can you can find one for you, one that fits you. Um, one of the one of my favorite organizations that I'm a part of is the Center for Public Deliberation, which is housed in the Communication Studies Department, and it's committed to creating public dialogue and solving uh, local civic issues. Uh, we go out in the community, undergraduates and graduates become trained facilitators to help uh, our community solve uh, community issues, which is one of my favorite things. Uh, so, But there's one for every, everyone can find their organization. Awesome. And to end, we'll go ahead and shoot it over to Tom and Emma. Well, um, the Dance major is a really tight-knit group as it is, so it hasn't really produced a student organization until this semester. Um, uh, one of our majors has decided that she wants to try and get something going that um, is a place to do a lot of the styles of dance that we don't really get um, as many opportunities to do in our technique classes, which focus mainly on modern and ballet. So um, hopefully that'll get off the ground this semester and we'll have that for dance. But in theater, and I guess kind of the arts as a whole, we have this really cool student organization called the Young Producers Organization. And they basically take proposals from any students who have an idea that you want to produce. Um, and they choose a, a few a semester. It kind of depends on which semester, how many they pick. And they help you produce them. So for instance, I applied last year and wanted to do a dance theater um, type show. and I. Uh, they accepted it, and you know we, that kind of became a little mini project. And some of my favorite theater shows that I've seen at CSU have been produced through the student organization. Um, but the thing that a lot of people don't know about YPO is that it's open to dance and music as well. So it opens up 
that whole world of collaboration between the arts that we, we kind of get to experience at the UCA anyways. Yeah, it's worth noting that this Young Producers Organization has their own space, uh, their own theater in our building, uh, with lights and sound and all the technical elements needed to put on a show. And they literally do everything. I mean, they have faculty advisors, but I'm telling you, they don't do much more than come to a few meetings. The students do it all. Uh, on the music side of things, there's, there's quite a variety of student organizations. The music education uh, group has their national organization that they're part of. Our music therapists have a national organization. Uh, and we have a couple of uh, professional fraternities. Um, there's various kinds of fraternities. They don't all have giant houses. Uh, but uh, in our case, uh, we have a group called Phi Mu Alpha Symphonia. Uh, which is a men's music fraternity that does service, puts on concerts, all kinds of different music-related things. Uh, and then another group called Delta Omicron, uh, which is a co-ed uh, professional music fraternity uh, that, again, does some of those same kinds of things, a lot of service uh, and a lot of music performance as part of, um, as part of what they do. Uh, you will never want for something to do in music, theater, and dance. Seriously. Never, <laughs> never, never. All right. So one last thing before we wrap things up tonight from an admission standpoint. The freshman regular decision application deadline is coming up here on February 1st. So if you have applied, awesome, congratulations, we're happy you applied. But if not, we really suggest that you apply by that February 1st deadline. So keep that in mind. Other than that, thanks to all of our panelists for coming in and allowing to uh, us to use them for a little bit of their time this evening. We're really excited about that. Thank you all for helping us. Tomorrow night, we have RAM chats on engineering, physics, math, and computer science. So if you know somebody who's really science-oriented, this would be a great night for them to go to. Otherwise, if you're interested in math, that's cool too. You can come to that as well. And we have more RAM chats all throughout the week. So you've got some options to what you can come if you have multiple academic interests that you're thinking about. If we didn't get to your question tonight, uh, we will put a lot of the answers to questions up tomorrow. And we might have also answered them a little bit earlier in the broadcast. You might have joined a little bit later and have missed the fact that we answered your question a little bit earlier. So we'll make sure to let you know and put the rest of the questions up on our website tomorrow so that you can have access to all of that. And all of these videos that we've done in terms of RAM chats are actually on YouTube and we will put this one up there as well. So if you do have any additional questions or you're curious about any of that, please feel free to go on our YouTube account and check that out. Um, other than that, please ask us questions on social media anytime. We have a very active social media crew here at Colorado State in our admissions office and just all around the university. All of the um, colleges that we had on tonight have their own Twitter pages. So feel free to ask some questions, get those things out there. Otherwise, thank you all so much for joining us tonight. It has been absolutely awesome to chat with all of you and get some of that information out for you. Um, but other than that, have a wonderful rest of your night, and we hope to see you at other sessions throughout the week. Bye.